Well, we give God praise. Come on, let's give him praise. The words are yet appropriate in the sense that there may be some things of which we have overcome, but yet there are some things that we need to overcome. And so we'll continue in the overcoming experience. Amen. Down in our hearts if we just believe. We praise God for the choir and for the praise team. and for the band and thank God for you and for the great grandson or great great grandson two greats great great grandson of uh, (laughs) Frederick Douglass and um, the common approach to uh, the delivery and not the uh, uh thought of me being up here so that you are down here so but we're all here together thank you so very much appreciate you in um, December I decided that for the first few uh, weeks um, in uh, January and then this Uh, week of February, I would have some of the elders of the church who under normal circumstances have not the opportunity to speak, to speak for this congregation because I felt that they would have a message that they could give to the body. And at the eight o'clock today, we have such a speaker. I will be speaking at the 1045 But uh, this person has been the coordinator of our services and doing the things here within the ministry for quite some time. It comes uh, from a posture of loving God, loving his family, and loving the people of the Lord. He works well with the pastor of the church and the other components. I would love for you to be attentive as he gives a word of God to us, the people of God, so that our lives may continue to be enhanced by God. Will you put your hands together as he comes to us through the anointing of the Lord, the elder Wade? Would you come, please? God, we just thank you on this morning, God. I thank you for choosing me to be behind your holy lectern, God. I count it as an honor and a privilege, God. I count my service unto you as an honor and a privilege, for you are God, and you know all things, you control all things, but yet you choose me, you choose us. God, I just ask that your spirit fall afresh upon this congregation, God, and I pray that the word that I deliver, God, that I deliver, that you are pleased, God, and that the hearers truly hear, and we rebuke the enemy right now, that your word will fall on good ground, it will go out, God, and it will grow throughout the world. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Amen, please, you can have your seats. Look, I'm a little nervous here putting the mic down, and I need it. Um, amen, amen. I really enjoyed that. I, I, I really, really did, amen. I tell you, Sister Val, Boy, I like that. (laughs) The soprano was hitting that note. That is a blessing. But, you know, I talk to my daughter a lot of times, amen, about our history. Our history is very important. Young people in here, please hear me. You do not want to lose your past. You always want to remember your lineage. In the Jewish community, that is very, very important to them. Very, very important to them. In the Hispanic community, that is very important and paramount to them. In the Asian community, they always study their past. You want to study your past because you want examples. We need to give back to mentoring, mentorship. 
don't ever be in a position where you cannot take advice. I thank God for Bishop and Dr. Maynard. I do. Because Bishop Maynard, to me, is an example of what I can be. I look to him and I take advice from him because I do believe he is a man who has the heart of God. I believe that Dr. Maynard is a woman that has the heart of God and they care about the flock. So I have no problem consulting with him. Even though I am a leader, I'm being led by a leader of leaders. That's what he is, amen? And I thank God for that. It is very, very important. I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, and black history is so important to me because I recall us being the, first, the fourth family of color to move into that area. So I grew up with a lot of racism, a lot of hostility. At the high school in the area that I grew up in, there was a cage, and they built the cage to separate the black folks from the Caucasians when there was, when there was tension. That's what they would do. They would put all of the African Americans, or black, whatever term you want to use, in that cage. So I didn't go to that school. My brother did, and he would come home and tell us things. And this was in the um, early 70s, early, early 80s, late 70s. So this stuff was still going on, and we have a person in office. We need to pray for him because I'm going to tell you all something. If it was up to him, he would roll back time. He would roll back time. So we know that we are more than conquerors. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, praise God. We have overcome. We should never forget our lineage. There are folks that want to roll back time, and we should never, ever forget that. God is yet good. Amen. Just one other thing I'd like to say in reference to Dr. Webb. Dr. Webb, I applaud you, sir. You turned a prophet. You all, please understand. What I do, I'm a healthcare administrator professionally, and the institution he's at, it's a non-for-profit city hospital. So they're always coming on television saying things concerning him, but they're not being truthful. It's not Vanderbilt. It's not a for-profit institution. He is caring for indigent individuals. He is caring for the needy. And sir, I take my hat off to you. God bless you. That is a mission that a lot of people do not want to undertake, but we as the community, we can't leave folks behind. We need to care for everyone, praise God. That's what God wants. And that brings me to my, to my subject, amen? Our base scripture, Philippians 2 and 5. God continues to deal with me with the book of Philippians. And just titling, since we must, or since some feel we may need one, Proper perspective, joy, harmony, and contentment. Philippians 2 and 5, and it states, 2, 5 through 8, excuse me, and it states, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him a form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Again, God has been dealing, dealing with me about our mental state, about our thinking. Praise God. It's critical in our Christian journey that we maintain proper perspective. So sometimes we have to reassess or re-examine our thoughts to ensure we are maintaining proper perspective and focus. Even though we all have much to be thankful for, sometimes we allow the pace, of, the pace and pressure of life to zap joy from us. Amen. Anyone ever experienced that? Life just becomes overwhelming at, at times. But God, praise God. We may become discouraged and find life difficult to maneuver through. Sometimes we try finding substitutes for joys. I know I have. We might go shopping, make a major purchase, travel, or go see people. But that's only temporal. It's not lasting. That's not true joy. 
And just sidebar, sometimes it gets us in trouble. The enemy wants us to seek substitutes and to cause us to focus on things that are unimportant, insignificant, unspiritual, and ungodly. When we lose proper perspective, it disrupts our joy. But the Bible says to us, Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good of, are of good report, if there be any virtue, any goodness, in these things, that's what we should think on. Praise God. So the Bible is explicit in its instructions. It is telling us what our thought process should be. Praise God. Now, let me regress a little moment or back up. We have to understand, because I think sometimes we don't really look at things practically. The devil is our what? Enemy. He's our enemy. He's our adversary. And it's almost like when something happens, we like this. I have to tap myself sometimes because God tells me, he's your enemy. He's your opposition. He's doing what he do. That's what he does. Praise God. But we need to do what we're supposed to do. Our thought process has to be appropriate and proper. So if there be any virtue in something, praise God, that's what we should be concentrating on. Bishop says something sometimes that I like, and it's so true. Don't major on the minor. Don't major on the minor. Major on the minor. Ma major on... <laughs> Fupa. <laughs> Major on the major, praise God. Make sure you are thinking about what's significant, what's important, what's of God. The Apostle Paul is an outstanding example to encourage us to maintain the proper perspective. In tough and trying times in our lives, out of the four epistles that he wrote while he was in prison in Rome, he wrote Philippians to express his appreciation and affection for the believers at Philippi. More than any other church, the believers in Philippi offered Paul material support for his ministry. So they wasn't just talking. They were supporting him going throughout the land, throughout Greece, he, to these various places. Speaking to the Colossians, the Galatians, they were supporting and undergirding the ministry. Paul's joy toward the Philippian church is exuberantly expressed in his letter. It's, the, it's that joy that he wanted the recipients to experience as well. So Paul tells us in Philippians 1 and 12, 1, 12 through 14, but I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened upon me have fallen out rather than unto the furtherance of the gospel. So he wasn't in prison angry. He wasn't in prison complaining. He wasn't in prison murmuring. He was in prison praising God. He was in prison exhorting God. He was in prison and shackled worshiping God. Praise God. He says, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace to the White House. Praise God. And all other places. So he wanted everyone to know what his state of mind was. What his perspective was. While he was yet even incarcerated. And many of the brethren in the Lord. Waxing confident. This was his objective. They are waxing confident by my bonds. Are much more bold to speak the word without fear. So Paul was letting them know. Not only me, yes, I'm incarcerated, you may take my life. And there was a point in here where he said to live is to die. But 
Wait, to, to die is gain. Praise God. So he was saying, even if I die, I don't, he wasn't saying he wanted to die. But he said, if I die, I'll be with the Lord. Praise God. I'll be with the Lord. So Paul could see the end result. He could see that, praise God, what Elder Cole preached last week, that his labor was not in vain. Paul knew that his labor in the Lord Jesus Christ was not in vain. So he believed that by his example, by his right perspective, that others would not fear sharing the gospel. Praise God. He was more concerned about his spiritual state than his physical state. Amen? So picture this. Praise God. The brothers in jail, praise God, a song I love. He never lost his hope. He never lost his faith. He never lost his joy. And through it all, he never lost his peace. Praise God. Paul is definitely an encouragement to us. Praise God in writing the epistle to the Philippians. Paul expressed and demonstrated joy and wanted to lead the Philippians to the truth of Christ by teaching them that no matter what your present circumstance, joy is found in Christ. He continued in sharing that a community of believers living in harmony, joy, harmony, contentment, with one another comes only through mutual humility and model after the Savior. There were some disputes between folks, and Paul wanted them to settle it because he expressed to them there is harmony and unity in Jesus. He wrote in Philippians 2, 14 and 15, do all things without murmuring and disputing that ye may be blameless. So see, that you do this, but there's a reason. God always has a reason for everything he does. So he tells us not to murmur or tells them, which it applies to us, not to murmur and complain, no disputes, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Praise God. We need to settle our differences within the body of Christ because the world is watching. The world is watching. Are any of us guilty of murmuring and complaining? I can hold my hand up. I'm not asking you to, but I can speak of me. I am. I know I am. And I ask the Lord Jesus right now to forgive me of that offense. It is not attractive at all. The world is full of turmoil and disruption. And when people come into the house of God broken and seeking a change, they must see peace, harmony, and unity. Amen? We're offering them the better. Praise God. We're offering them better. Praise God. So if they see what they see in the world, there's no difference. Praise God. And we want to have a correct testimony before people. Praise God. We want to have a correct testimony before the Lord. We want to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen? Amen. Paul wrote that he poured out his life as an offering for the sake of Christ, leading him to find great joy and contentment in Christ's service. He wrote in Philippians 4, 11 and 13, praise God. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. 
I can do all things. He didn't say some things. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Praise God. Now, that's proper perspective. That's right mindset. Praise God. The brother didn't say he could do some things. I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. So he's talking about being content. That's a blessing, y'all. The spirit of contentment is a blessing. When you really think about it, we should be no other way but content in Christ. Christ paid it all. He paid it all. He gave himself. And one thing we need to understand, this is something that God dealt with me about and touched my heart. Jesus didn't have to sacrifice himself. He chose to sacrifice himself. He told the father, I'll go. That's what he told him. God couldn't find anybody, but Jesus said, there's me. God, the way love works, and we get to the place of contentment, is that we understand that we're not robotic. God is a God of free will. If I control you and I make you do things, that's not love. Love is an act of free will. It's a decision. I do this because I care about you, because I'm compassionate towards you, because I love you. Praise God. That's what God is. God is love. He's always concerned about us. His letter to the Philippians showed them that by centering their lives on Christ, they too might live in true joy and contentment. How many of us want joy, harmony, and contentment? Praise God. Joy, harmony, and contentment. Paul knew, and the Philippians learned, that joy, harmony, and contentment are only experienced through our faith, service, and love in the name and spirit of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is accomplished through us maintaining proper perspective. Our base scripture sums it up. And I think it's the centerpiece of the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians is magnificent to me because I can truly say, Bishop, I don't know if I could have been that pleasant in jail. That brother was locked up. He was in the clink, locked down. They might have been beating him. He probably wasn't getting decent meals. And he, he, he is still singing and praising to the Lord, Dr. Maynard. Now, I would have been like, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm already locked up. You know, let's keep it real. But that brother kept proper perspective and focus because he knew who had his back. <laughs> Praise God. He knew who had his back. Philippians 2, 5 through 8, again, our base scripture says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Praise God. Now, we're talking about God in the flesh, but he made himself of no reputation. Please understand, Jesus couldn't come in his glorified state. He could not. Jesus couldn't. That's what the Jews were looking for. That's why they still say that he hasn't come. Because they're looking for him to come down out of heaven in a chariot with horses flying. Oh! There you go. All right. That's what they're looking for. 
But the thing is, if Jesus would have come in his glorified state, we, we, can't, we can't live like that. Jesus is our example. So if he's gl already glorified and came down here glorified, we, we, we couldn't accomplish that. That's why he put himself lower than the angels as an example for us to live by, for us to look to. Also, if Jesus would have come in his glorified state, the enemy, Satan, remember, he was Lucifer. Never, you, look, you got to study your enemy. You got to know him. You want to learn him. He is truly your enemy. And you got folks, oh, don't read nothing about the devil. What? No, sir. I want to know his tactics. I want to know how he operate. Because I need to know how to combat that. He is going about as a roaring liar, a roaring lion. Amen. He's deceiving people. Praise God. He can still go to heaven. When the sons of men gathered, guess who came? He sure did. He showed up because he is a son of God. He's wrong. He turned away from his original purpose, but God still created him. He just defiled his purpose. So if, if Jesus would have come in his glorified state, it would have allowed the enemy to go to God and say, mm, but you wasn't fair. You came yourself. See that? That's not right. No, God made it to where we could have an example and that the enemy would have no way of refuting what he put in place for us. He can't call it unfair. Praise God. So that is our proper perspective, to have the mind of Christ. He took upon the form of a servant. I know a lot of us don't like the term servant, but sidebar another thing. Please understand, you were created and designed to worship, praise, and serve. It's in you. So the fact of the matter is, whether you serve God, you're going to serve something. You will serve something. Be it pure, God, or defiled. You're going to serve something. The brother gave a testimony. May I, brother? May I? That brother was transparent. I hugged him. I said, man, thank you for being transparent. Praise God for him. That brother told us he was a servant of drugs. He told us straight up. And then he said, but God changed my life. Now I serve Christ. Praise God. That brother was a blessing because we don't know what folks dealing, dealing with. We have one of the worst opioid crises in Tennessee. So we don't know what folks are dealing with. Someone could have heard his testimony. Bam. The spirit of God move on them. They life change. And then we got another testimony. Then another testimony. Then another testimony. Praise God. God is so good. So pr please understand. It's good to be a servant. It's by design for us to serve. Praise God. And when we get to heaven, guess what we're going to be doing? Serving. Worshiping, praising in New Jerusalem. Serving. Because Jesus, it's already outlined. God is the emperor. Jesus is the king of kings and the lord of lords. It's already in place. Praise God. So we have to keep and maintain our minds on our proper, proper perspective. Someone already tried to take God's place. Didn't work. Didn't work. So that's already been tried, praise God. And he was made the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, praise God. Elder Sanford told us about obedience. It's better than sacrifice, amen? Unto death and even the death of the cross. Joy, harmony, and contentment are precious God-given gifts. Precious God-given gifts. 
that he desires for us to have, display and share with one another. This is confirmation that better lives are built through God. Praise God. Better lives truly are built through God. And life with Jesus continues to get better and better and better and better because he's the best. The best can only make things better. Praise God. It's confirmed in God's word. Because look at what happened because of Jesus' obedience, what he received. Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. It says that every knee shall bow, praise God, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Joy, harmony, and contentment. God is amazing. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I pray that, amen, that something that God gave me was a blessing in your life. Amen. God is so good. Better lives truly are built, Bishop, through God. God wants us to have joy, harmony, and contentment. He wants us to have peace. The enemy does not. But understand, the enemy is just going to do what he does. But look at it this way. Maintain that proper perspective. When the enemy comes, it's an opportunity for God to show his greatness. It's an opportunity for Christ to step in, amen, and for you to witness the magnificent power of our, of our Lord and Savior, amen? amen? Amen. Please understand, if Jesus had adversity, if Jesus had situations, we're going to have them. But you know something? If there were never any bad times, how could you appreciate the good times? proper perspective that's perspective we're not asking for the bad times but God always wants to show us better and greater God is magnificent amen 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 can we pray amen amen we'll do a corporate prayer amen well first I should ask amen is there anyone who doesn't know the Lord amen amen Amen. Is there anyone who desires prayer? Amen. The cares of life have become overwhelming for you. Amen. I'd like to pray with you and share with you that God is greater. Amen. I believe in transparency. None of us are superhuman. Only God. That's why we need God. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Let us pray. God, we just thank you right now. I thank you for your word in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you for giving us proper focus and perspective. I thank you, God, for giving Bishop Maynard the word that better lives are built through you. We believe that by faith, God. And we believe that when we end this year, we will have great testimonies in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you are able. There's nothing you can do. You cannot fail. And God, we thank you for joy, for harmony, and contentment. In the blessed name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. God bless you.
Well, give God some praise in the house. Hallelujah. Praise him for the word of God. Now give praise to God for the messenger. And the mere fact that God would allow a message to come to us that would help us to continue in our joy and our harmony. Come on, give God some praise one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Jesus went to Calvary. this year 2019 we want to be found doing the will of God walking in his ways the greatest opportunity we have today is being in the will of God all other things of life center around that for if you're in his will, you will accomplish all things that God wants you to accomplish. And living in the spirit of God gives you access to all of the things of God. Healing is in his spear. Deliverance is in his spear. Financial security is in his spear. Everything about your life is in the spirit of God. And all you need to do is say yes to him. The question came, was there anyone who would like to give your heart to the Lord? In 2019, this would be a great time to do that. Not let days and weeks go by in this new year before you say yes to God. I'm going to tell you something. I'll get into that later on in the 1045 service. But those young kids who got together and took that man's life, that didn't just happen that night. That is something that was in them. The absence of God and a home that teaches and trains the principles and things of God. I'm going to tell you all something. We get off into some stuff that we all not get off into in terms of blaming others. Some of this stuff we have to take ownership of. We do. We have to take ownership of some of this. We can't blame that all on society and societal patterns when there is a God that we can introduce our children to. And I know, I know right now that there's some of you all who don't agree with me, but I've been down that road too. I've been over there. I've been over here. But I'm going to tell you where we need to be. It's up there. <laughs> Amen. But I'm going to get off into that. Don't leave ever the presence of God without yielding to the
the will of God. When you're in his presence, you need to yield to his will. God will do great things for you. If you're in here today and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, this is a great time to say yes to him. Just lift your hand up in the sanctuary if you want Christ to come into your life. If you're here today and you have Christ in your life, but you say, Brother Man, I need to be in a church that preaches the gospel, that teaches the gospel, trains by the gospel. You feel that this is the place that God would have you to come. I want you to raise your hands. Brother Man, I believe this is where I ought to be. This is where I want to be. This is the place of uh, not just my preparation, but also my place of promise. Amen. Just hold up your hand if you're in the house. And we praise God for you. Thank you so very much. You may be seated. Woo. Thank you, sir, for a splendid message. We appreciate it greatly. Amen. We're getting ready to worship the Lord in the ministry of giving. What a great opportunity we have to give. Happy to see the increased population of our ushers. <laughs> Amen. We're going to give as the Lord has blessed. It is just awesome to know that in the midst of economic insecurity for some, God has given us economic security. And, and because of that, we just say to him, God, we'll do unto you what you ask of us in the word of God. I have never treated giving as though if I give or don't. If I don't give, I go to hell. If I give, I go to heaven. I don't treat giving like that. I'm not giving because I don't want to go to hell. I give because I love the Lord. Is there anybody else who love the Lord? I, I just don't, I don't, I just don't believe in, in that philosophy of doing because you don't want to go to hell. Amen. <laughs> Some people say reason why, I, reason why I give you something, uh, wife, is because, uh, you know, I'm supposed to. Sometimes y'all don't do it because you want to. <laughs> Blessings come that way, don't they? We got a line up over there. Amen. God bless you all. Everybody's going to share today, and God's going to bless. We thank God for those of you who give uh, online. Uh, we appreciate it very much. Those of you who are streaming and uh, Facebook Live with us, thank you for your gifts. Let me bring something to your attention. May I? We're going to get out so we can go to church school, but I want to bring this to your attention. I appreciate all the gift of five givers. I do, but I want to bring something to your attention. If you give online, the amount that has to be paid by the church is less than if you give Givelify. Now, now, now understand me, Givelify is great. We, have, we brought it to the church. But Givelify is good if you're not here. that wherever you may be, give it a five. But if you're sitting in the sanctuary and you can do it online, it's, it's cheaper. That makes sense? I'm just trying to give you the difference between the two. You go over there, it's cheaper. Go over there, it's cheaper. 
a giving a five, we, we hey, we appreciate it because it works. Amen. A lot of people giving today and giving a five that they used to didn't give. Amen. So we th we thank God for giving the five. <laughs> we don't want to knock it, but I just thought I'd bring that to you. Like if you're just sitting in here right now, and you're just sitting in here, you know, yeah, you know, if you're at home, all my good. Friends and members who are at home right now, God bless you. Thank you for giving a five. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. All right. So let's do the very best we can. Is that all right? Good. Good. All right. Yes, sir. Glad to see this family that's been away working extremely hard, getting themselves ready for their coming years. Talking about the Collins. Glad to see the Collins back. <laughs> Amen. Don't forget uh, Deacon Brady on um, Tuesday and his brother's funeral. We want to be here for that. Amen. All right. Oh, all right. Thank you. It's my understanding that the meeting with the parents relative to youth ministries would not be after service today. It would be on the fourth Sunday. Everybody got it? It would be on the fourth Sunday, not today. So now, if thou shalt come to the front and sit waiting for a meeting, thou shalt be meeting with thyself. All right, God bless you. May we stand. I'm so excited. You, you, you know something that happens to Nashville and we're getting out of here? Something happens to Nashville. They tell us all the time. Every once in a while, they're on, they're on, they're spot on. Every once in a while, they're spot on. But they tell us all the time, all of these things is going to hit Nashville. They tell us all the time. And the Lord just let them go around <laughs> and not hit us. Aren't you glad how well God treats us? Now, we, we pastors are excited when it doesn't happen on Sunday. <laughs> we don't want it to happen at all, but praise God. And so God is just good to, to us. And we have reason to give him praise. Father, in Jesus' name, your blessings upon every gift and giver. We thank you, Lord, for these who are gathered. We thank you specifically for the word of God and for the worship experience that we had here today. Continue to bless us in what we do. And then, God, help us to bless others. We yield unto you that which is yours, and we give unto you that which is ours. Receive them, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Thy name shall we always lift and give praise. And the people of the Lord said, Please come down to the receptacle, ushers, please.